think it's something that we want, it's something that we want to identify with. It's kind of a milestone age. In our class, we talk about it as a whole number. We also classify it as an integer and a rational number. 100 is our perfect number. It's our first three-digit whole number. The idea of a basketball player scoring 100 points in a game is remarkable. The crowd at Hershey that night was 4,000 something. I have been to at least three banquets with Wilt Chamberlain. People will come up and say, Wilt, that night that you got the 100 in the spectrum, I was there. I was there. 40,000 people now say, I was there. I remember a guy telling me we played in the Palestra. He got 100 in the Palestra. <laughs> It was in Hershey. That game was definitely the most memorable of my career. One minute and one second to play. When he hit 100 points at Hershey, Pennsylvania on March 2nd, 1962, I was a statistician in that game. At the time, I was also the PR director for the Philadelphia Warriors. The Inquirer decided not to send their writer, and they asked me to cover the game for it. 167 to 146. Now, let's see if they found somebody quick. Say, so I wasn't as shocked as a lot of people were because he had scored 68 something like that in the game just before that. Rogers throws long to Chamberlain. He's got it. There I was, I had to cover the Inquirer, AP, and UP. He's trying to get up. He shoots. No good. The rebound left him, Bill. When he got up to close to 70 points, a little bell went off in my head. And I said, This guy's going to go over 100. I really felt that way. I let the, the world know I was the first one that told everybody that Will had 100 points. There was no photographers in that building when the game started. One guy who worked for the Associated Press was at the game as a spectator with his son. He said, I'm gonna go back and get my camera out of the car. And he's the only one that took pictures of that game. And so when I came back to the dressing room, he's standing around there. I walked over to him, ripped out a page out of his book, and I got a pen, and I wrote 100. Harvey should get a lot of credit. He got that hunk of cardboard, and Wilt wrote 100 on it, and still has it. Just saw that picture the other day. It's in the paper the other day. The game did not end when Wilk got the 100 point. It was 48 seconds of play. He stood on the sidelines and spread his out like this at the, uh, against the stands and watched the game. It was five against four. That's how the Knicks got four more points. So the Sixers only had four men on the floor. There was just another game to him. The next night, we were playing the Knicks again, but in New York and Will lived in New York. He came up with, on the bus with the team from Philadelphia, but he went back with the Knicks in their car. And they were going right back to New York after the game. So rather than fuss around and go down and get on a train and all that, he just jumped in the car and rode back with them. Here's a guy who just scored 100 points against him and he hops in the car and rides back with him. That must have been a great conversation while he went back to New York in that car. That was by far the busiest night of my entire career. In fact, when we left the building with my crew to go back in the car, we come up by automobile to Hershey. I said, stop at the first bar. I need a drink. <laughs> the biggest surprise of that game was the way he shot fouls. Wilt was a lifetime 50% shooter at the foul line. For a guy who had everything going for him, his size, his strength, his flexibility, his athleticism, his speed, I mean, Wilt we'll, we'll had it all. He was the whole picture. There were people who argued that Michael Jordan might have been the greatest player of all time. He certainly was one of them, but he wasn't better than Wilt Chamberlain. Nobody was better than Wilt Chamberlain.
100 is our perfect number. But well, that would have to be the perfect night.